Greetings, I am very excited about this one today because we're going to be talking about how to play a Nintendo 3DS emulator on your VR headset connected to a computer and not only play the emulator but also be able to play it with full 3D parallax effects like you might do with an actual Nintendo 3DS. So it's actually really, really cool and it works quite well on your VR headset. So I'm going to be using an Oculus Quest 2 for this linked to a computer via cable. You can also link it via say AirLink or virtual desktop as well. And now if you just want to get straight into how to do it, I do have timestamps below so you can skip ahead. But I just want a minute of your time just to give you a bit of context for this entire video. I have done quite a few videos on emulation in the past. Emulators that run on the Oculus Quest and are made for the Oculus Quest. Android emulators not made for the Oculus Quest but you can still play them on your Quest and also emulators you need to connect to your PC in order to play. So I've covered quite a lot of emulators in the past but my favourite has to be the Virtual Boy emulator for the Oculus Quest. The reason why I love the Virtual Boy emulator so much is that you can emulate it on a PC or you can emulate it on another flat screen device but you don't get near as good experience as doing it on a virtual reality headset like the Oculus Quest because with the Oculus Quest you get those 3D parallax effects. Now you can't see the 3D effects on this video here of course but when you put the headset on and you try it for yourself you get this really cool 3D depth effect. And it's the same with this 3DS emulator. You get this 3D depth effect using your virtual reality headset that you can't on so many other flat screen devices. And so that's why it makes playing the 3DS in your virtual reality headset so much better than say on your PC or other device that you might use for emulation. And I'll just finish by saying, if you do like this video, hitting the like button really helps me out. And if you're not subscribed already, and you do like the content coming out of this channel, hitting that subscribe button and notification bell, even though it can be a bit of a pain, that'd be much appreciated. So you can be kept up to date with all the content coming out of this channel. So for this video, we're going to be using the Citra 3DS emulator. From the time I've been using it, it's actually worked quite well for me. I haven't had many problems. But if we go into the website, you've also got this compatibility list that shows how well each of the ROMs work with this particular emulator, which is quite handy. Now we could go to the download section. We'll see that you can download it for Windows, for Mac, for Linux, and even for Android. I've only tested the Windows version, so I cannot speak for the other versions and how well they work. So installation is fairly straightforward, you just follow the prompts, you select the installation folder and it will give you a choice of two versions of Citra, I install both of them. Now for the most part you'll be using Citra Nightly which is the reliable, tested, stable version but Citra Canary is the experimental version and you might need to use that for example if a particular ROM doesn't run too well on Citra Nightly, then you might want to try it on Citra Canary to see if it runs any better. So I install both of them just for that reason. So once you've installed it, then we run Citra and it'll look something like this. Now you'll see I've already selected the destination folder, but that's the next thing you have to do. Select a destination folder for your games. Try to select a single folder where you store all of your games, just makes it a whole lot easier. And you can see here I've got Legend of Zelda and Link Between Worlds. This is the demo version that I'm going to use to test it. Now just quickly, this video isn't about ROMs, how to get them to work, where to get them from, or the legalities of ROMs. So that stuff is beyond the scope of this video. But I will say, if you do download ROMs, just to take care because there are malicious sites out there. So make sure you do your homework before you download anything. Now there can be a bit more when it comes to getting ROMs to work on Citra, such as sometimes you might need to decrypt the ROMs to get them to work. But that might take a while and to be honest it's a bit beyond the scope of this particular video. And there are a ton of good resources out there that show you how to do this. For example this video from Tech James is a great guide on how to decrypt ROMs and get them working on Citra. I'll link that video in the description below if you're having that trouble. So once you load your ROM, it might look something like this. Let's go into emulation. I'll go through a few of the settings. We go into configure. We've got a few settings here. Firstly, we can mess around with the emulation speed, speed it up, slow it down, depending on how our game is running. If we go into system, we can play around the CPU clock speed. Now, if we go into graphics, 
What I like to do is change the internal resolution to make it look a lot better. So I'm using six times native. And you can see how it's running. If you go in the bottom right hand corner, you've got your speed, your frames per second. So all these different performance indicators. So that you can play around the settings, see how it affects the performance of the game. If your game is slowing down a bit too much, then you might need to change the internal resolution to something a bit lower. Now we need to play around the stereoscopic 3D mode. This is important obviously to get the 3D effect and I select side by side and then I adjust the depth depending on my preference. You could also adjust the screen layout. This is the default setting for example or you can have it as a single screen just like that. Uh, it's really again up to you and how you like to play. So apart from that there is one more main setting that I'd like to touch on if we go again to emulation then configure we go to controls and that's where you configure your controller. For example, I'm using an Xbox controller in this particular case. And I believe the default controls are your keyboard. So next I go on my computer, open my Oculus app, then I search for big screen beta. Big screen beta at the moment is free, so I download that for free. Now you can do the same thing, but using virtual desktop. The only thing is virtual desktop isn't free, but big screen beta is. And now you connect your headset to your computer via the Oculus Link cable or AirLink. And so once we're done that, once we're streaming content from our computer, we next have to select Big Screen Beta. Now if it is your first time using Big Screen Beta, there is a tutorial, but you can skip it if you don't want to go through it. And you'll come into a lounge room like this with your desktop presented on this kind of cinema screen. So it isn't 3D just yet. We'll need to change one more setting in big screen beta. And then I make sure that Citra is set to full screen so we don't get none of those bars above and below it. I click in my left thumb stick to bring up this menu, go to my room, then go into desktop. And there's an option there that says 3D SBS, which is basically side by side. So enabling that gives you the 3D effect. And there we go. Now you cannot see it as 3D obviously on this video, but it does have this depth parallax effect. That looks really cool, especially in this kind of big screen cinema experience. With big screen beta, you can also change your position in the theater. I wouldn't sit off to the side because it does look a bit weird, but you can sit closer or further away depending on your preference. And there are also a few different environments that you can play in. I like to play Zelda in this woods environment. It reminds me of some kind of forest that you'll find in a Zelda game. Now, as I mentioned before, you can do the same thing in virtual desktop. So here I am using virtual desktop to play Zelda. I just press the left trigger on my left controller and you can select side by side options. Now, I made a little mistake here. I did full side by side, but in fact, you need to select half side by side and then the screen looks a lot more normal. So half side by side seemed to work for me. And just like big screen beta, you have different environments you can play in. Now there is an Android version of this Citra emulator and you can install it onto your Oculus Quest so you can play 3DS games standalone without needing to connect to a PC. But you cannot, as far as I'm aware, get that same 3D effect because when you run it inside your headset, you use Oculus TV. And as far as I know, Oculus TV doesn't have any of these side-by-side -side options. So unfortunately, you can't get the same 3D effect if you run it as standalone from within your Oculus Quest. And so that's the Nintendo 3DS emulator Citra using a VR headset. Now I use an Oculus Quest 2 in this case, but I'm sure you can use other types of VR headsets. I don't see why there would be a, a problem with that. I'm sure it worked just as well. So honestly, this is, apart from having the actual handheld console yourself, this is probably the next best way of playing the Nintendo 3DS. In fact, it might even be better than the handheld console because you can have different environments and massive screens in which to play it on. So it does have a bit of an advantage when it comes to the small handheld screen of a Nintendo 3DS. That's it for this video. Like I say, I do have tons of other emulation stuff which I've linked in the description below that you can check out. If you have liked the video, do like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to be kept up to date with all the latest content coming from this channel. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.